So three weeks exactly from today, we get the NFL draft. And from now until then, we're going to take you inside each team's war room. Up today, the Dolphins. One of the biggest ads in free agency, wide receiver Will Fuller. A new weapon for Tua, taking a look at some of the other signings there with veteran quarterback Ryan Fitzpatrick gone. The Dolphins also picked up Jacoby Brissett. So what other needs do they have as we get closer to the draft? Let's welcome in former NFL quarterback Danny Cannell. Danny, so just recap the Dolphins free agency for us. What grade would you give it? I'd give it a B minus, Amanda. I mean, they filled some needs. There wasn't that big, splashy, you know, big home run signing that some people were hoping for because they're in need of some weapons and they're in need some of, of some help on the defensive side of the ball and bringing in will fuller is nice but he comes in with a little bit of baggage with you know suspension with injury issues but it could be a home run as well because the potential has been there i mean there's a reason why uh you know he's always been mentioned as a top tier potential option in free agency uh and it's a one-year deal so it's pretty low risk he brings a speed threat on the outside to go out opposite of Devontae. Parker so I like it from addressing the need and I think it'll also help a younger receiver that they're going to draft kind of get up to speed and allow them to play multiple places maybe even move that person into the slot whoever they decide to go with um, so I think that was a good you know solid potential uh, need that they filled um, sign an offensive line of Matt Skura from the Ravens again somebody lost his job last year because of issues but this is a young offensive line I mean they spent three draft picks on rookies last year to fill the offensive of line you bring in somebody with a veteran presence so I think they address some needs oh and Jacoby Brissett I can't forget about Jacoby Brissett because it, we saw how much Ryan Fitzpatrick played last year when Tua struggled I mean it was basically a two quarterback system when you Brian Flores was not hesitant to say all right uh, if Tua struggles I'm going to bench him and with Fitzpatrick leaving to get that starting opportunity in Washington you needed to get a backup to come in there that is capable of coming in if needed and filling that role in playing and having little to no drop off at the quarterback position. So they filled some needs, not the sexiest of picks that are out there, but they filled some needs. So I say a B minus. All right, B minus there for free agency. Um, when it comes to the draft itself, the Dolphins have made some curious moves leading up to it. It all happened within about 15 minutes. It was wild. So initially they had the third overall pick. They traded out of that with the 49ers for 12, a couple future first round picks. But then in just a couple of minutes later, while sitting at 12, they traded with the Eagles to go up to six. As of note, they also have the 18th overall pick. Danny, what do you make of these moves? I love it. I mean, I think what you're seeing is Chris Greer, the general manager, realizing, hey, I mean, it was a it was a funky, funky deal to try to follow. But you're going to get with all the love for quarterbacks and you don't need a quarterback because you have Tua. You can get the same player you were probably looking at at three. You could draft that same player at six because there's going to be a run on quarterbacks at the top. And so you basically got more in return and you got out of that third pick and you traded back and added a couple more there. So I think it was a pretty smart move for the Dolphins to move back three spots. You're going to get the same player you want to take at three. And it was pretty aggressive because they do have a lot of needs. So they get some more picks in their favor. And yet they don't have to go all the way back to 12 like that initial trade where you might have missed out on one of these speedy wide receivers that I think personally they're going to go after with that sixth overall pick. Yeah, and there are a couple they could. We'll get to that in just a second. Um, so when it comes to the draft, what do they need specifically? Because I know you're focusing a lot on offense still. Absolutely, I am, because that's what they need. They need weapons. Uh, I mean, look at it's an arms race in the NFL. Look at the two teams that played in the Super Bowl and look at the weapons that were on the field. When you look at what Tom Brady was working with, there's a reason why they brought in Antonio Brown and Rob Gronkowski, and there's a reason why Tom Brady went to play with Tampa Bay with Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. There was a plethora of weapons. Look on the other side. Look at the Chiefs, who are one of the most prolific offenses in the NFL. Look at all the weapons that Patrick Mahomes has to work with. We already know this is a critical time time for Tua Tonkavaloa after a shaky rookie year, they need to give him weapons to work with. So I would say aggressively pursuing wide receiver, aggressively pursuing a running back, aggressively pursuing the offensive line up front to kind of bolster the protection around him. And there are some needs on the defensive side of the ball as well, but you have got to give Tua the best opportunity to, see, to, to succeed because I do believe the Dolphins were in the market for Deshaun Watson before the off-field problems arose and 
and it you know totally threw a wrench into those plans. And so now that you're sort of forced to be all in on Tua, you want to give him the best opportunity to succeed and you might be in the market next year for a quarterback, so you've got to make your decision on the future for Tua, and the best way to make the best decision on Tua is to give him the best chance to succeed by surrounding him with talent because that's what he had at Alabama, that's what made him special then, and that's what you're going to have to give him in the NFL. All right, Danny, let's talk names at six. Specific names here uh, because there are a couple guys out of Alabama that could be there with Tua. Yeah, I know there's a popular sentiment of, hey, let's give him one of his old teammates for comfort level. Uh, and it does make some sense. And it also, coincidentally, they do have to be the top you know, wide receivers in the draft and Jalen Waddle, uh, J- Jalen Waddle and Devontae Smith. But I also think Jamar Chase is the forgotten guy because he did opt out. But he was just as spectacular as Devontae Smith was uh, two years ago when Joe Burrow was throwing him the ball and he was lighting up SEC defenses himself. So the great part about this is is the Dolphins have a need, they need a wide receiver, and they're going to have plenty of op- options to choose from. I would probably lean towards Jamar Chase. I think people have tend to forgotten about what a crisp route runner he was, how physical he was, how he made outstanding catches in traffic. I think he's the best option. But the Dolphins might decide, oh, Jalen Waddle. People are forgetting about him because he was hurt. And look at the toughness he showed just by coming back for the national championship game and trying to put his body on the line. And he, got, he has a tremendous amount of speed, which you can't teach. And then, of course, the Dolphins might decide to say, oh, well, Devontae Smith, we just saw him lay down one of the most impressive seasons in college football history by a receiver. We love what he brings to the table. So the good news is the Dolphins are going to have really good options for that sixth overall pick to add a weapon to, you know, to add into Will Fuller and Devontae Parker. So they're good options. Just a matter of what do the Dolphins like the best? What do they think that best fits their system? And ultimately, I don't think they care where he went to college, if he was teammates with Tua or not. They're going to go with the person that best fits their system. Well, Ryan Wilson agrees with you. His latest mug draft has the Dolphins selecting Jamar Chase, uh, and that is also Ryan's wide receiver one heading into this draft. All right, so that is six. Uh, A lot of good options there. They're going to get one of them. What about at 18, Danny? So I know I focused heavily on the offensive side of the ball, and I think that's a running back is a position they need, but I do think it's a stretch. If they decided to go running back, I think Najee Harris or Travis Etienne are the two best options that are available out there. I think Travis Etienne is my particular favorite, but I wouldn't go there this early in the draft. I would lean towards the defensive side of the ball, get somebody to add to a pass rush, which was really by committee last year. They didn't have a dominant force on the defensive side of the ball. They didn't have a single player who had over 10 and a half sacks on a defense that was really good, that kept them in the playoff hunt and kept them you know, competitive throughout games last season. So I would like to see them focus on the defensive side of the ball with that you know, 18th uh, uh, pick in the draft in that first round. Uh, Gregory Rousseau is a guy that people have I've forgotten about because again another player who opted out but he was a projected top 10 pick before last season and then he gets swept aside but he is incredibly athletically talented what had 15 and a half sacks on his own in his freshman year his one year playing at Miami there's a raw potential about him that I think scares some teams because you've only seen him play a year but I think he'd be a phenomenal option and then there's Carlos Boogie Basham from Wake Forest who is another player who had a phenomenal career in the ACC, played a lot of football, and was able to dominate on a team that wasn't one of the best in the ACC. Not on a Clemson, not on a Bama, not on Ohio State. So he's playing with less talent around him, and yet he was still popping on film, getting after quarterbacks, even though he was facing a lot of double teams, and oftentimes some of the best you know, blocking schemes that he could have to face, he still excelled. So again, one of those scenarios where you've got options, you've got a need, there will be, and, and a light draft it's not exactly the best draft of edge pass rushers but where they're selecting there should be some good options where they can take probably the best one available as of right now ryan has greg rousseau dropping to 31st to the chiefs uh so we'll see if the dolphins are there if he's there at 18 if perhaps they will select him all right after the first round they have six picks at rounds two through seven what are some good options for the dolphins there 
Well, this is really, Amanda, this is where championships are made. Everybody talks about the first round picks, but it's deep in the draft where you have the best opportunity and you can find some value there. And with that 36 pick in the in the second round, I think that's where I'd love to see them have one of those running backs fall to them. If they don't, if those guys are snatched up before then, that's where a player like Javante Williams of UNC could be a player that has really popped to me. He was outstanding in his career at North Carolina. I think he's a completely under the radar player. You don't have to back up the tra uh, truck. You don't have to spend a first-round pick on him. And then also a player, Kenny Yaboa, out of Ole Miss, who is a outstanding, like could be a, a, a Pro Bowl-type tight end coming out of Ole Miss, who is flying under the radar. Everyone's talking about Kyle Pitts, but they're actually, this is the transitional type of position where – it's 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 you must have it and I love what Mike Kosicki has brought to the table for the Dolphins but I would not hesitate to add another tight end to the stable of weapons so that you can run a lot of two tight end sets look at what the New York uh, New England Patriots have done under Belichick they had a couple of tight end options they're going back to now everyone was shocked with the free agency period when they brought two high paid tight ends in there now they understand the value I think Brian Flores and Chris Greer understand the value of a tight end and you might be able to find one later in the draft than a Kenny Yaboa. All right, Danny Cannell, thanks so much for taking us into the Dolphins war room here. Uh, taking a look at the Dolphins odds when it comes to 2021 so far. 28 to 1, not necessarily near the top there to win the Super Bowl. Uh, plus 1,400 to win the AFC. And then when it comes to their division, plus 340 to win the AFC East. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.